thank you, God. And we bless you in the name. Good morning. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, hey, God. We want to say welcome to our in service online and to our visitors this morning. So, on behalf of our bishop and our lovely First Lady Lori Denson, welcome to the Burning Bush 10 a.m. worship service. Amen. We are so glad that God has led you to be here to celebrate him with us on this day. So if you will, just take a moment and give God some praise just for allowing us to be here today. Amen. Because God has been good. God has been good. Am I the only one? God has been good. God has been good. God has been good. God has been so good. And on top of that, he's just been kind. He has been loving and he has been gracious. So today, we want to just say thank you, Lord, for all that you have done in our lives because we cannot make it without you. Glory to God. We cannot make it without God being on our side. We cannot make it without God being on our side. Hallelujah. Well, God, we don't want the rocks to cry out for us this morning. We don't want the rocks to cry out for us this morning. So we will give you the glory. We will give you the honor. And we will give you the praise in this house. Amen. Thank you, Lord, the creator of this universe. All glory to your name. Well, welcome again. So at this time, if you will please stand with me as we get ready to recite our psalm of protection, the 91st psalm. We praise God for this psalm because it is truly our canopy of protection. Amen. And when you're ready, let's begin. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare and the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eye shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up with their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Oh, let's praise God up in this house today. Oh, let's praise God up in this house today. Oh, God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. 
Ha, hallelujah. Let us pray. Just first, God, to say thank you. Thank you for waking us up this morning, God, to be on this side to give you all the glory, the honor, and all the praise, God, which is truly do your name this morning. God, as the song was going forth, we cannot make it without you in this barren land, God. So we come looking unto the hills this morning from truly with cometh our help. We learn today, Father, in Bible study that we are the light. So if the light don't shine in this darkness, God, where shall the light be shown, God? So we thank you that we can be the light in this barren land, that we can be the light in the midst of this darkness, oh God, that we can be the light to this world, oh God. We need to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. So Father, we come, your children, your people, calling upon your name this morning. For there is no other name given unto heaven where men might be saved. So God, we call upon the name of Jesus this morning. Jesus, our deliverer. Jesus, our keeper. Jesus, our healer. Jesus, our deliverer. Jesus, clean this morning, God, saying thank you, God, for cleaning us from the inside out to glorify your wonderful name, oh God. So we thank you this morning, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that we are so, hey God, we are saved by the grace of God. Nothing but the grace and the mercy of God has brought us thus far. So God, with uplifted hands and open hearts this morning, oh God, your children, your people, your servants, oh God, we have come to say thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, this morning. We thank you. So, Father, as the word go forth, touch, heal, deliver, and set free. Touch the man of God to deliver the word, God. All that you have imparted, God. Let it come forth and come out, God. That someone will come crying out, what must I do to be saved? So we thank you this morning, oh God, for all of your great gifts unto your children, God. So this time, we come to worship. We come to give you praise because it is truly do your name. Thank you, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. You know, today is July 3rd. Tomorrow, July 4th, and it's a day that we celebrate because in 1776, there was a declaration that was signed. And let me tell you three things that the declaration said. It said, God made all men equal and gave them the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It said the main business of the government is to protect these rights. And then it says, if the government tries to withhold these rights, the people are, to, are free to revolt and to set up a claim against it. I want you to know, though, that over 2,000 years ago, when our Lord and Savior came to this earth, and when he ministered here, and when he died on that cross, and he nailed our sins, past, present, and future, to that cross, and when he rose one day with all power in his hand, we were free. We were free. 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That means there is emancipation from bondage. There is true freedom. Now some of you are going to wait until tomorrow to have your barbecue. Some of you are going to wait until tomorrow to party. Some of you are going to wait until tomorrow to dance. But I'm telling you, you are free right now in Jesus Christ. Now is the time. Now is the time. You are free worshipers. So if you have two good legs, if you have two good feet, if you have, come on, Lisa. Come on, Bertha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go. Hallelujah. Let's go. Oh, hallelujah. Put your hands together. Come on. Here we go. Woo! We're free to worship today. 
Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. Woo! Yeah, come on like this. Like this, come on, here we go. Yeah. Hey! Yeah! Woo! This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna clap like louder than before. Hey. I'm gonna sing louder than before. than before. Oh God. 
God. I worship you, oh God. I'm going to worship him. I'm going to give him all I got. I'm a free worshiper. Yes. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. Lord, I'm free. I thank God I'm free. I will never you're free. You will never be bound again. Help me say, I thank God I'm free. And I'll never, and I'll never, 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 never be bound again. Whoa. I thank, I thank God I'm free. I will never, 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 I'll never be bound again. Be bound again. Why? Because I'm a free worshiper. Hallelujah. You, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise, clap right we are. Hallelujah. Anybody free today? Anybody free? Amen. I'm quite sure the flags are already flying and all that kind of stuff that about our independence. But what about independence with God? Amen. You have missed this morning, man, a word about the creativity of God and the word of God. You need to go back and get Sunday school. It's going to bless your life. Amen. It blessed mine. So my, it was just a good word by itself. Amen. And, you know, when you think about God loving us, amen, Christ, I'm enough to tell you about his life. Don't forget that God loves you right where you are. Amen. That in your darkness or wherever you are, God loves you right where you are. And it's your job, amen, to, express, to uh, uh, receive that love to our service as they've already done. But just felt like doing it personally myself today. Amen. Uh, grab your attention. Our gentleman trying to give you our announcements. Amen. And we'll be back. Our Youth and Teen Church is now open to ages 6 to 18. Parents, if you desire for your child to attend Youth and Teen Church, just give Prayer Week. Last week we had prayer and fasting Monday through Saturday, and it was a Holy Ghost wonderful time that we had in the Lord. Next week we will be back to our regular prayer schedule. Monday, July 4th, of course, because of the holiday, there is no prayer. But we will resume prayer on our fast Wednesday at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. And then on Friday at 7 p.m. Victor Valley College is now offering a program called One and Done. This program is to serve our Victor Valley students on uh, 
July 13th at 9 p.m. to 3 p.m. At the VVC One Stop, they will have counselors available to help with admissions and records, financial aid, student support programs, counseling, and more. So if you are going to attend VVC in the fall, please take advantage of the One and Done program on July 13th at 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the VVC One Stop. There are several ways to get Burning Bush news, and one of those ways is our email e-blast. If you would like to receive emails and e-blasts with updated Bush information, please email uh, us your email address to jumbotron at bushpower.org. Another way to get those messages is to stay connected through the Bush app. Be sure to download the Bush app to stay connected. Be sure to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And always follow up uh, with us on Instagram. Lastly, save the date. Save the date. August 1st is the birthday of our beloved First Lady. We will celebrate as a church family on August the 7th. These are your announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly and have a blessed day. Thank you. Uh, she's so tall, they cut her head off at the top, even pictures. Amen. Amen. She's going to learn how to squat down when she take a picture. So that way she be in the whole frame. In some okay, bless the Lord. Now, if you don't get a text from our leadership, it's because you're not connected to a leader. Amen. And so if you get connected to a leader, then there are some texts that I send out that will bless your life. All right. And you all say, every, every leader, raise, stand up. Stand up, leaders. That lead. Guess ain't that many in here. They're all on vacation. Amen. <laughs> Grab, now, it ain't going to work because you're looking at the back of their head. So they need to stand and turn around so you can see them, huh? Okay, they're going to stand one more time and take them uh, a mask off so you can see them. <laughs> Amen. So you know what they look like. Say, all right. <laughs> Brother Hoja was like, uh, yeah, he halfway turned around, Lord Jesus. I mean, just sent out quite a few of those, amen. And we sent out a text last night that we asked our members, amen, in the area of giving, especially our leaders, amen, that in this time of recession, amen. I what did that text say last night. Anybody get my text I said last night? Uh, print that for me. Uh, Y'all got it back there? Y'all didn't get the text either. Me didn't even get the text. Lord Jesus. I'll put it on screen. Can't y'all put it on screen? I thought we got this modern technology. We could do that. I just want the picture where the other part. You didn't get the picture on yours? You ain't connected to me. <laughs> I guess not. I didn't get a picture. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we asked that in this season, amen, as we came out of our first fruit. <laughs> That's a shame. I mean, still has a shame. That's what it says. When God blesses you financially, don't raise your standard, but bless your life. When God blesses us financially, amen, don't do that. Don't raise your hand. Because you give everybody a raise except the church. Once you fix what you give the church, you leave it there for 13 years. And you go up, but the church stays right there. So ask yourself, amen, when was the last time you looked at your giving and then gave an increase, not just at one time, but in your standard? You know, I know I went to, I went to, uh, uh, last night, I want some chili dogs. They were well, some chili dogs. They were, he's, playing, he's playing so deep, he didn't hear me. I'm talking to you. <laughs> He'd be off into it, man. He'd... And some relish, mustard, and ketchup. You know what I'm talking about? I know some of y'all put cheese, but I don't eat cheese on the job and no place else. And uh, I'm sitting here and, and these things, and I said, so I go to the store. And normally when I go get some chili dogs, hey amen, I'm usually spending like 10 bucks. You like it. Hot dogs, buns, and chili. 
under 12 bucks. But since I already had the chili, I expected it to be $10. Because that chili was at my house. Do you know, know the albums and razor price? They didn't ask me nothing. They didn't consult me. They said, David, I know you're coming. And everything that I wanted last night, amen, with Lloyd's Little Soup, $17. So what I normally spend 10, now I'm spending 17. And then nobody asked me nothing. And you know what? Guess what? I couldn't get to the register and say, I ain't going to do it. I could have said that, but you know what they say? You ain't going to get it. Church is the only place where there's no raise. You get used to cheating God where you are. I says, when we understand giving and stewardship, I'm talking to members now. Not just you here, but you that at the house. Because what that text said, I know that you will add another $50 just before the You had to buy your... You had to buy that stuff in the bottle. Then the other stuff in the can that, that when you get on the ice, it turned blue. Am I anybody's house? And your ribs. You're going to spend another hundred dollars than what you used. We come to the church when God has done everything for us. And we keep on giving the same dollar and hope we can holler. This stewardship, if you would, I've asked our leadership, amen, that you would, amen, pray about increasing your giving on first Sunday by $50. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. All right. So we do that as a church, and guess what? We've already handled recession. I said this before recession came. But recession is here now. Don't feed Albertson and Stater Brothers and Food for Less and all them people that visit your house and forget about God. What we're going to do, amen, time give, we're going to raise our giving, amen, every first Sunday from now on by $50. That's $50 a month, everybody. Now, I have to give a whole $50 to in cash today because I give out $50 to $100 every month just in offering. Not count tithes, that's just offering. I get $150 a week just an offering. It, isn't it just the right thing to do? How many of y'all paying more for hair now? Ain't no woman gonna raise their hand now. Come on. Javon, how much a haircut cost now? What'd he say? It's costing just as much to take away hair as to get it. I'm just saying, we give every place else extra and you forget God. Now that's not my appetite because I make sure I give about $1,500 a month to this church in tithes and offerings. The rest of them forget that they're deacons and they're supposed to help the church grow. We got to have another meeting at the church. Well, God bless you. Amen. We're going to take our offering at the end because I need you to meditate on that. I just want to share that with you. Amen. As we move along. <laughs> Come on, praise God, somebody. Is this, what's next? <laughs> Whose phone is this? You got my Bentley on there, flying spur. That's your armor bearers. Bless the Lord. I receive. <laughs> we happy. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Just a blessing. Oh, tell them one more time. I say that again. I am free. Uh -huh. yes, 
praise the Lord, I'm free, no longer bound, it's just a blessing. Hallelujah, I'm free. I am free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer my soul is resting. It's just a down there where I can sing it. You couldn't do it because you started too high. It's just anointing. Yeah, right there. Got to direct and everything today, you know. Thank y'all though. And Jesus passed by 
he saw a man which was blind, that he was born blind. Jesus answered, neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. For night cometh no man when no man. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man. Sent. He sent, he went his way therefore and washed and came seeing. The right that he was blind said, is not this he that sat blind and begged on 7th Street? Some said, this is he. Others said, he is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, how were thine eyes open? Jesus. I thought I'd celebrate it by myself. A man that was called Jesus made clay and appointed my eyes and said unto me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received sight. Then said unto him, where is he? He said, I know not. I subjugate man in final closing, amen, distracted by the works of God. Distracted by the works of God. This is part four, I believe, and it is our final piece. Three? Lord say three. I thought I preached it four times, but Lord say three. They say two, I say four, Lord say three. And we're going to go with what she says since she's the teacher. It don't matter. I'm finishing today. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for your teaching. Thank you for the instruction. Thank you for this time of prayer all week long, dear God, that we've drawn closer to you, God, that we can come clean. Bless you, God, for what you want. We pray. Amen. You that are home, amen, I'm going to just do a quick roundup, amen, of where I was and what we've talked about these other two, three, or four times. Amen. And it's talking about distracted by the works of God. First of all, Understand, distracted by the works of God has to deal with not so much as that you are distracted by God working, but you're distracted by how God works. Anybody distracted by how God works? I don't think they deserve to be saved. Let me go again. Amen. Amen. In my sanctified imagination, I don't believe that some people, amen, deserve to have another chance. But I am distracted by the works of God because seeing like God keep freeing jacked up people. Why do you say that, Dave? Because he freed me. Uh, Y'all ain't helping me right now. You thought I was talking about somebody else. I'm just saying the fact that when I think about what God's done, devil, amen, that I, I know I'm not supposed to get in, but guess, tell your neighbors that, but I'm getting in anyway. Oh, I feel God right now. I, I, I'm getting in anyway, amen. You know why I'm getting in anyway? Because he loved me just as I was. Look beyond my fault and saw my need. Give me about 10 minutes. We're going to get there. I, to what they were taught by the Old Testament doctrine. We said in the book of Exodus, amen, we found doctrine about how God, amen, will make sin come on your children and your children's children if you commit sin under the law. Jesus here in the book of John, amen, is describing a new grace that's on the life of the church. Jesus is describing here now in this text and by in God's word. I say grace has come in God's word. So therefore, we understand the fact that we're distracted just by the works of God. We're saying this, that in the midst of what we do, amen, in the midst of what we've done, God's grace has come to get you out of your predicament. I, this, this kid was born blind, amen, and under the law, amen, if you had a child that had a defect or you had some kind of birth defect, it's because someone in your generation before God, thank God the fact that I am not charged with what my forefathers did. Anybody, buy, anybody, anybody got come from a jacked up family? Anybody come from a divorce? Anybody got some, I need, I need about five people that got alcoholics in their family. I need about five people, amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I think about all that God's done for me, ah, 
Thank God for this dialogue with him. Say, who has sinned? Has his father or has mother? And Jesus comes up with a whole new answer that they have never heard before, and it threw them off. He said, neither has sinned. Not the mother nor the father. Now they had a question. If the mother didn't sin and the father didn't sin, then why does this boy have some trouble in their life, amen, or in their marriage or in their family? And you didn't do nothing, but trouble came anyway. Come on, somebody. I said, trouble came anyway. Let me try to cut you in. Trouble came in. That happened that the works of God might be glorified. I feel your pain right now. I feel somebody right now saying, that was me, God. You're trying to look at, I don't know how my child had a baby out of wedlock. I don't know how my mama had a boy. I don't know how my daddy went to jail. I don't know how uh, they got a divorce. I don't know how we got this trouble. I don't know how I got this pain. I don't know how I got this arthritis. I don't know how. Can I tell you that the got screws in my hip. I got screws in my arm. I got... I'm missing a whole said that I need a new hip in 10 years. They said these screws gonna mess up and give me arthritis. That was 25 years ago, and I still jump. I still twist. You know why it happened? That the works of God might be made manifested. It ain't all because you did something wrong. It's can God put mud on you and use you? Can God put spittle on you and use you? Can, can God rebuke you and use you? Can, can God allow sickness to happen in your life and still use you? That the works of God, on that one word called obedience. Tell your neighbor, it's obedience. Uh, the step one was obedience, and we found that in John, John 4 through 7. We must work the works of him that sent me. As long as it is day, night is coming. When no man had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay of spittle and applied the clay to his eyes and said to him, go wash in away." And he washed and came back saying, stop right there. Huh? He, he went obeyed, came back seeing. Let me see. He went, acknowledged, came back seeing. Went, think about what you came to. Oh, I'm going to need my cordless mic today. I feel that. Hallelujah, amen. He went and he came back seeing. The problem, some of y'all, let me talk to y'all on Facebook, amen. You had two years off and you ain't came back. You ever went somewhere and came back seeing? Have you, have you ever been bad at your parents? Just two of y'all, the rest of y'all lying. I, I see one hand, I don't see Micah's hand up there. Amen. I'll put it back a high so my son can see. Zoom in on him. Now watch this, all of us have been mad at mom and daddy. When did you come back when you had your children? When did you come back when you got a wife? When did you come back when you had to pay bills? When did you, anybody come back seeing? We all have done some stuff, but now we get to come back seeing. That word seeing, I come back understanding. Because God has something for us. So therefore, he says, I will watch and sing. Now, F, here it is. In order to experience the power, which is the works of God, we must be obedient. You, in order to have the works of God, watch this, that word working, that, that you are what? That you might see the manifestation of God. The work is the manifestation, Scott. The work is the willingness to obey, saints. The work is the fact that I got a revelation, so now I might as well go and do. Anybody got a standard? Oh, y'all got automatic cars. How many got standards? All right. All right, I'm going to watch this. Yeah, yeah, clutch. Anybody got no clutch? All these rich folks can clutch. I, when my kids, my boys were, thank you, Brother Ashley. Amen. My boys, amen, started to learn how to drive. They want to learn how to drive. And, and so uh, uh, I bought, I can get on a go-kart and go. But, but to have a standard. Amen. You got to know how to drive. And so my, 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 my manifestation of this is the fact that, that my boys being boys, if they had anything like me, 
they need to have some things in place so they don't do some things. Right. Here's Ann Rubber Girl's thigh. Yeah. <laughs> they got six shift because you, you, you can't drive. Who sinned? The father or the mother? Neither one of my boys sinned. But I gave them the stick that the works of God might be manifested. So therefore, my grandson's here. And I forgot about it, little Josh. I did, son. I, I, was, uh, I, said, I, I said, my grandson can't drive. I said, he almost ran over somebody. And I said, the works. And so, and I said. I was like, what? That's what you did to me? So I have to borrow Brother Ashford's car. So Josh could. Some God might be manifested. I gave it to him. He can drive a stick. And based on his father, I don't know who sin. God. Y'all ain't got it. So there's some things that happen in life, amen, that ain't about you. Let me say it again over here. When trouble just always, things always happen to you. Can I tell you? Ain't about you. It's about you being able to see the works of God and obeying the works of God and growing from the works of God. Is that helping anybody? See, see, praise team comes with two practices. And guess what? They'll get better. And guess what? The grace is on their life. Even when they mess up, it don't matter because in glory it sounds good. Oh, come on. I say in glory it still sounds good. Even when there's mud on their voices. Nah, okay. So therefore, that may he has been blind from birth. Can I tell you? If you can see, raise your hand. Just kind of wave at me. You're still blind. Say deficiency. But just as Jesus covered eyes with mud. Somebody covered theirs with glasses. And now their defect is not a reject. I can't see past. If I take these off, amen, the Benjamin as far as I go. The rest of y'all, y'all better be glad that he put clay on my eyes. Because right now, all y'all ugly. You know why you ugly? Because I can't see. And so that the man, yeah. Keep talking. Mm. Oh, thank you. I feel a manifestation right now. I feel the works of God. Zip me again. Uh, you're distra oh, you're distracted by the works. Okay. Oh, now you want to talk to me. What? All right. We good? All right. <laughs> this, this is your door. Just keep preaching. How? I was blind. Got me feeling cucumberish. <laughs> All his life, that he or someone in his family had sinned. That's bullet right there. That's your. Secondly, now there comes this man named Jesus, who says. Thirdly, this is not the result of. Maybe it. just maybe 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 he was heard. He heard Jesus, and maybe he was even heard about the miracles that Jesus had been performing. Maybe that's what he heard. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's what he heard. Hey Amen. Y'all put mine up and left yours down. All right, bless Lord. Watch this. Then he says, get up and walk. Begging, get up. Whatever you've been going through and whatever you've been dealing with, amen, and you think that's the end of the world, get up. Somebody shout, get up, get up, get up. You don't have to stay in the shape that you're in, but you got to get up. 
And then you got to find some way at the utterance of his words. Like our Sunday school lesson, something was created. At the essence of his word, because of something that was said, a man, uh, manifestation was created. Obedience. Can I, can, I, can I tell you? God don't have no delayed word. God said, let there be and there was light. Let the firmness and separate and it did. Let the waters come and it did. So therefore, when Jesus took clay, are some of y'all letting down some of this alcohol? Because you start to see. You know why some of y'all stop gambling? Because you starting to see. You know why some of you stop whoremonging? Because you start. I'm starting to see. I'm starting to see. Yeah. Sunday school said that God's word create things. John said, let, in the beginning was a word, and the word was living because of his word. Jake said it like this, that he created the whole world, and then he made man. Made man, amen, and put him in a deep sleep. <laughs> Has anybody saw something? Whoa. You know what said that, man? 36. She was a. I want to say that loud as a single man. Wig. Watch this. He turns around, he turns around and say, he says, he said, bone of my bone. She saw a one, he saw a woman with a wound that came out of his wound that was sealed and her was open. It was open that the manifestation of God might be take place. Because he said, now, Produce and multiply at me. Hello, somebody. I don't care about all this other stuff, but I'm trying to tell you that the birthing came out of you. That's even though it's blind. Your life can still produce even though you can't see nothing. Brother DeWitt was talking about one of our brothers, a man, <laughs> said that he was in L.A. and and, and Doc can't see. He said, and he said, I go to LA all the time. Now, DeWitt can't see. And Doc can't see. He said, well, right to the left whole nine yards. And DeWitt said, I can see. And I don't know where I'm going. How he can know? <laughs> Talking about the blind leading the blind. Come here, I got something for you. You're only blind to the world. You're not blind to God. God can get past your deficiency. And so, oh God, I love you right there. So watch this. So I wonder hmm, if he was getting a bit excited that Jesus might say to him. I don't know if I heard about Jesus, I'd get excited that he can make me taller. I only have one, one thing I desire the Lord. And if I was I'd like to be like 6'2", six, 6'3", six, like my grandkids. And I want to know how about none to sin. It was that the works of God might be glorified. What do you mean, Pastor? Because if I was 6'2", you couldn't stand me. <laughs> Y'all ain't helping me right now. Y'all, any, any tall people know what I'm talking about? Uh, I mean, any short people know what I'm talking about? If I had two more inches, y'all could not stand me. You think I'm arrogant now. Because if he gave it to me, my vein and my selfishness would have gotten away, and God wouldn't be able to do a 5'11 and a half. I want my half. This has boots that were a size 10. I got in the boots, and my feet are already ugly because you know, when I was poor, I had to wear shoes for a long time, and then you, your toes curl up. I was in a baptized. I don't know who switched boots on me. Had nothing to do with the message. Just thought I'd share. Watch this. Watch this. Open your eyes and experience what will heal you. Watch this, everybody. Open your eyes 
and see what will heal you. Hey, you got too many questions. Why? Couldn't you just do it right here? You're like Naaman. Naaman? What? Can't, can't I go down to the Jordan where the water's clean? Speak to him. He said, if they'd have told you to do something great, O king, if they'd told you to do something marvelous, yeah. let me try this. If they'd have told you to spend a whole bunch of money, would you have done it? If they told you to go to St. Mary, no, not St. Mary's. If they'd have told you to go to, some of us are missing the works of God because we want to do what we're familiar with. We want to do what we're accustomed to. That's why you can't change because you want to do what you used to doing. Oh my, okay, y'all, let me try to do it. Is there anybody, just somebody speaking in tongues that's not from the Lord, but you can't? You know why? Because you've been called into obedience to do something different. Give me 10 minutes, I'm out of your way. Watch this. So watch this. It's time to see. Tell your neighbor it's time to see. Get better. Tell your neighbor you ain't got nothing to lose. You might as well try Christ. You ain't got nothing to lose. You tried everything else and it cost you this. You tried everything else and it cost you that. But now, what do you have to lose? People tell me all the time, I don't, I won't be saved because I don't miss nothing. You sure ain't. Here it is. If I was, here's my walk with God. If, if I do all of this, and there is no everlasting, I got one question. What have I lost? What did I lose by loving people? What did I lose by forgiving people? What did I lose by helping people? What did I lose being high? I've lost nothing but kindness. This side of life is better than the blind side. On the blind side, I got to beg for you to give me stuff. On the blind side, I got to ask you to do stuff for me. But on this side, in the journey, some sinner listening right on TV right now, you ain't got nothing to lose. You mean you have a problem about being nice? You mean you have a problem with being kind? You got a problem about being caring? Look, you got a problem by not showing you, not acting an ass. You ain't got nothing to lose. You were born blind, all of us, that the works of God might be manifested. Crack! This life that he's calling your blindness to is that you might see and see that you have nothing to lose. The text says that Jesus made mud of clay and put it on his eyes and told him to go wash. Then he applies it his eyes and goes wash in the instructions. I probably, if you will, <clears throat> would have gotten just a little bit angry and irritated at this man, Jesus, because I've been begging for coins here for a long time, and now you want me to go walk someplace that I never walked before. The reason I haven't been to the pool, Jesus, is because I can't swim. And because my mama said that you can't swim, and I don't want you to go down there to the pool of Salon because you might trip and fall in. But now... You're telling and I should be careful where I walk. They told me I was blind, and I should be careful by the company that I keep. They told me I was blind, and that people would play tricks on me here and there. And now I hear this man, Jesus, trying to play with me. What in the world are you going to do with me, Jesus? No one else could make me sing. And now you're telling me to go wash in the pool of Salon. Haven't I suffered enough by the trials of the street every week? Haven't I gone through enough uh, that my mom and daddy won't even claim me that they own me? But brothers and sisters, I'm going to my clothes here 
Is there anybody here who knows my God? I feel God right here. Now you want to humiliate me by telling me to put mud on my face at night before you go to bed uh, to make sure skin is right. Uh, I know they go down to the mud salon and make the body covered in mud that they might feel nice. Uh, I don't need to feel nice. I need to see Jesus. Uh, so therefore, I'm ashamed about what you're asking me to do. Is there anybody here? God asked you to do something ridiculous. Uh, are you crazy? You want me to put mud in my eyes and inside is anybody here want to be clean inside many of us might have stayed right there and said I'm not going to wash in the mud uh, but some of us are just like mud uh, mud means moving under depression mud means moving under defeat mud means moving under defiance mud means desolation but when you ain't got nothing to turn to then you move under desperation <laughs> I feel desperate enough uh, to wave my hand I, I feel desperate enough to, to shout said I'm going anyhow uh, is there anybody here that's going anyhow uh, well I feel God right here is there anybody here uh, know that the word of God uh, he went down and washed in the pool of Salon you'll obey God uh, if you don't mind uh, and you know God's on your side uh, shout yes uh, if you know you're a way maker shout yes uh, if you know you do it say won't he will won't he will won't he will uh, make a way out of no way he stopped what he did and when he was blind and obeyed the man of God he's distracted about where people are going to think about it he stopped being distracted by the begging of the can he stopped being distracted about church being at the wrong time he stopped being distracted because he couldn't make it to Sunday school he stopped submit to the power of God it's time to come clean we was in prayer the other day and somebody said, you ought to come clean. Uh, I know you've been sitting there like you ain't got no trouble in your life. Uh, but if you know that God brought you out in a long way, I dare you to come away. Won't he make you clean? Uh, he'll make you come clean. Uh, he'll make you come clean. Uh, but you got to praise him. He'll make you come clean. But you got to shout for him. He'll make you come clean. But you got to dance for him. He'll make you come clean. But you got to run for him. Is there anybody? here that want to come clean up get rid of your drugs come clean up come 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 clean come clean yeah 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 no more distractions they tried to distract Jesus kept him from the grave but Jesus said I must work the works of hit me him sent me while the day when night cometh no man can work. I don't know about you. But if you follow obedience, the anointing is in the instructions. We ain't out of message. We out of time. Won't he make you clean? Won't he make you clean? I need about 10 more people that won't he make you clean? Come on, I need somebody to know they've been forgiven, know they've been washed. He will make you clean. No. What makes you clean? What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Won't he make you inside? No more distractions by the works of God. You don't have to know it. You don't have to explain it. You just have to submit to it and watch God. Do you want to get rid of some mud? Move under depression. Get rid of the mud. The idea is that he washed and became sin. I just believe that your conversion doesn't happen just when you get to heaven. It happened right then when you put mud on your eyes. The mud symbolizes obedience. Your job is to obey. You're obeying that somebody's already been here. I told class of the day, the older I get, the more foolish I was. 
And now I learned how to obey. You know why I'm a better, I said on Wednesday night, Bob said, I'm a better father because I became a grandfather. And that's why we ought to be changing generations. We ought to be making ways, brothers. Just like I'm going to take my grandson, amen, and teach him a principle of life because this principle about driving is going to teach him something to go. But when you got to pay attention, when you got to be responsible, when you got to be accountable, that boy went and washed because he was obedient. He was accountable. He was responsible. And the Bible says he washed and came seeing. The text says he came seeing. Came where? Wherever he wanted to came. And our prayer we find, Brother Sanders, Minister Sanders said, it's time to come clean. Which really says it's time to wash. If you're here today and you want to come clean, you're today and that responsibility is on you to go wash and to wash it, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If that's you, I dare you to come clean so you can come wash at the pool of Salon. The word sent. God sent you here today to hear this word. Now all you have to do is obey. If that's you, man, woman, boy, girl, lift up your hand and we'll see you in here. You that are on TV and YouTube or whatever that's called, amen. The doors of the church is open for you to give your life to Christ. You can come clean right house. And some of us need to come clean with one another. Because I'm not that good and I'm up here. Is there one that want to join the church, give their life to Christ, and come join our church on next week? I see. If that's your hand, hallelujah. Is there another? I saw in the back. Your hands up. Come on, come clean. Come on, come clean. Come on, come clean. Anybody else want to come clean? Come on, anybody else? You're tired of walking around blind, tired of walking around with mud on your eyes. Come on, come clean. I dare you to move right now and watch God do a miracle in your life. Is there one there? Is there another? Man, woman, boy, or girl. To God be the glory. Bless you. If that's you, my brother or sister, we want to welcome you to the body of Christ. And as we are welcoming my brother right now, we thank God for you being here today. Amen. To God be the glory. Come on, give God praise, somebody. Come on, you can shout better than God bless you, sir. Bless you, man, God. All right. Come on, celebrate God. Go with my brother. He's going to share some stuff with you. And we'll be ready to be about our Father's business. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hold on, y'all. Amen. Ushers are coming now for our tithing offering, amen. If you make you to the left, amen. Our $50 above, amen, is going to do that today, amen. Give me a, 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 a envelope over there. Put that 50 in there for me. Is over and above what we really need. Thank you for your obedience to that giving and that contribution. Amen. All minds clear to our left. Amen. They'll be coming from the left to your right. Let's lift up our gift in, our, in the air. And let's bless it. Father, we bless this seed that we're about to give right now. Those that are home are lifting up their pads and their phones and their every first Sunday to God by $50. Amen. Per member. Thank you, Lord, for those that are there. Thank you for those that are growing there. And we believe. Won't we make you clean? I'm just trying to share y'all pictures. They're going to switch to the band. Of me.
getting harder too. It was almost like when Lori zipped up my pants. They married, they can do that. You know what, some of y'all need to learn how to relax in church. Hey Amen. Some of y'all need, look, if y'all was at the country club, y'all be rolling on the floor. Y'all buy stuff that don't even make no sense. And you come to church and act like you got mud. Tap your lips and say, go wash. <laughs> now, I'm closing here. Why church was so boring. I wonder why people I saw that smoke cigarettes outside and drink liquor at the liquor store, play dominoes and cuss in the park, that do devotion on Sunday morning as a deacon, and they look like the frozen chosen. I told God, if you ever let me have church, I'm going to be me. Can I get a witness? I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Some of you are missing your abundance. Put those boxes to the left and right. Love offering. I'm sorry about that. I forgot about that. Amen. Thank you so much. Crit. Those that are giving love offering for the man of God, you can come put that in the bucket that you so desire. Thank you so much for your kindness. I forget about this stuff when I start rattling my mouth and, and running off at the mouth. So may God bless you. Amen. Don't let your kids hate church because of you. Let me say it again. Don't let your kids hate church because of you. Most kids don't want abundant life. Someone asked, somebody asked me a question one day. He just say everything that ever come to mind. I got one question. Am I lying? Because the day you catch me lying, I'll start preaching. So the key from line, I told God, I'll tell the truth no matter what. I don't want to give me this image, the fact that I'm so We better. Christianity is about living a life. And I tell you right now, I live an abundant one. Because God has been good to fireworks. Be careful. That's what I can tell you. It's not supposed to be. The teacher said there's no fireworks in the desert. You that have fireworks that are illegal, be careful. God bless you. Good to have you. Another good to have you. Got two more over there. God bless you. Oh, Lord. If I knew y'all was here, I wouldn't have been cutting up. That's a lie. God bless you. Amen. One of our leaders is going to go to you right now, greet you out the door. Amen. We want to take that down a little bit, y'all. Amen. We're going to take you, take you out to meet you. We have a gift that we want to share. We got men in the church today. Go on, my Lord. Amen. And a beautiful young lady to my right. Amen. Amen. Come on, leaders. I need you to move like not yesterday, today. Amen. God bless you. There they are right there. That's follow that hospitality person. Love you. Thank you for being with us today. Anybody else? You got salvation. You got yours already. Thank you for being with us, though, family and friends. Amen. In Jesus' name. Let's stand on our feet. May the Lord bless you when you rise up early and you settle late at night. May God bless you in your labor and your leisure, your fears, and yes, evil. And friends, and may the Lord bless you. Bless you real good is our prayer. Come on, celebrate God, y'all.